Hello, everybody. Welcome to Unity's Creator Spotlight, the show where you get a rare in-engine look at incredible made with Unity games. I'm your usual host, Hassan, and welcome to everyone who's joining on Twitch, on YouTube, or if you're joining us from the front page of the Asset Store. Welcome. Uh, excited to bring the show to you today. Uh, today's game is going to be an absolute blast. It's an online multiplayer physics game that's sort of a mix between a boxing game and a game of pool or billiards, if you prefer. Uh, and we're going to get to the bottom of how it's made the game we're looking at today is called bare butt boxing uh let's play the trailer All right, so we're here with Tuatara Games. Welcome, guys. How's it going? Good, good, good. good. Awesome. I'm so happy to have you. So let's do a quick round of introductions for everyone. Let's start to my right uh, with uh, Evan. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Evan, uh, and I do game programming mainly on the game, uh, and uh, I help with game design. So I'm fo mainly focused on the gameplay uh, part of the game. Okay, amazing. Pleasure to have you. Excited to uh, go over some of the uh, dots implementation in this game, some of the multiplayer uh, implementation. Uh, and uh, yourself, Hendrik? Yeah, I'm Hendrik Titoy. Uh, I'm a software engineer uh, for Tuatara. I've been a part of the project uh, basically from the beginning uh, to help the game make the game online. Okay. Um, I have a similar history with uh, network and with building websites in the past, so. Yeah, I'm just making my my uh, stride into the game industry. Amazing. It's a pleasure to have both of you. You actually both have very interesting stories of how you got to working at Tuatara, and we'll get to that. Uh, but first, I'd like to just get a general like history of the studio. Is this the studio's first game? Yeah, uh, it's actually the second game. Mm -hmm. uh, it started, so Tuatara started as a visual effects company. And uh, the founder, Clement Lozar, he um, he made a little uh, a game first on his own when he was like founding the company. And then we'll get more into that later. But uh, then he made this and he assembled a team and then we built this. Yeah. OK, amazing. So we have a video of that game. We'll play it uh, on the side and maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit more about it. Right. First game that the, the founder made. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it's let them come. The game is called Let Them Come, mm. yes, and it is published by Versus Evil. And uh, yeah, it's like a pixel pixel art, uh, very like gory with really cool visual effects. Um, that uh, it's more like a tower defense. Um, mm -hmm. You're just uh, some dude that's uh, in a spaceship and you're killing a bunch of aliens that are coming at you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the lighting, I think it's really good. and. The game was uh, something Clement worked on while he was still in the industry doing visual effects. 
and um, yeah, you just kind of did, did that, and then uh, from there on, yeah, he, he kept going with it and doing more visual effects for clients and making more games like I mean, we are now. <laughs> just looking at it, uh, looking at the B-roll, uh, something about this game is just so juicy. <laughs> yeah, it's very satisfying. It, it looks extremely satisfying. The way things <laughs> explode, the lighting, it's so well done. Uh, and that was his fir first foray into, into games? Yeah, I think it, there was like a bit of a transition between uh, making the visual effects company and uh, uh, leaving, like then uh, working for AAA visual okay. effects. And then uh, I think you also just wanted to play around with Unity in a little bit and yeah. actually make a game. And did a did. great job. <laughs> yeah, and he did. Yeah, which is a, not, not an easy task. It's incredible. And so, and so, was, was this done solo? Yeah, it was done solo, which is very impressive he mm -hmm. did like a bunch of console launches as well and uh all the ports I think, yeah I, th I think yeah oh. he also did some twitch integration which uh, he told me about i was like wow this this guy he does everything <laughs> what kind of did twitch integration did the game have if you remember um i think it's their drop i don't know exactly oh i, I noticed do, it, yeah. But yeah, yeah you you interact with the audience through that um, I'm not 100% sure exactly what that was, but yeah. Oh, okay, okay, that's super cool. Okay, and then how did you go from, uh, or like how did the studio get built after that? What, what made you decide to grow the studio? Yeah, so Clement was doing um, some, he's, he does a lot of uh, experiments of mm. like a procedural animation um, and VFX on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I think he started playing around with some stuff and there's a, uh, some of it, his experiments just got a lot of traction yeah. on Twitter, and uh, yeah, that's actually how how I met Clayman the first time. I I was following him on Twitter, and I okay. saw all the stuff he does, and then I was uh, I saw he made a, like a tweet about like he's looking for a network programmer to turn a, a experiment into an online game. Yeah, and then I replied to that, and then now now I'm here. And you were just out of school, right? I was. Oh, I was maybe studying a little bit, but I had a part-time job. It was, okay. It was a tough time. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're doing, you were doing a lot, basically. Yeah. Okay. And so then you you reached out to him and then just flew out to Vancouver, basically? Actually, no, because it was a little bit... Uh, COVID was still going on. Oh, uh, I see. So, very yeah, I was, uh, I was just helping him a little bit. I, I had to, like, just show him that I'm capable of, mm. of making games. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, from there on, um, I showed him some stuff. I started part time actually, and then I'd say maybe like a year later, I uh, eventually, yeah, eventually got full time job, mm -hmm. and that was all during COVID. And I was living in Toronto at the time. That's where I studied at Sheridan. And then, um, yeah, after COVID kind of settled down, I came to visit him and like shake his hand as I should. Meet him in person, finally. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then I fell in love with Vancouver. So. I and where here. were you before Toronto? Uh, I'm from South Africa okay. originally. Yeah. And yeah, I was doing like some non-game related stuff there and I really wanted to do something a little bit more creative. So Makes sense. I came to study. Yeah. And even how about yourself? How did you join the team? Uh, I also... Uh, got uh, first uh, as a got in as a part time job. Mm -hmm. Job, so I was mainly um, like helping during my studies uh, on the game, uh, and uh, that was quite tough. But uh, I think uh, my addition kind of helped to boost uh, the project, uh, like energy, uh, yeah. and. Uh, after that, uh, it's I was in France, and uh, since I uh, finished, uh, like I graduated, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I could go to Vancouver and uh, also shake uh, Clement's hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and for and it's been like six months or something like that that I'm in Vancouver now, and uh, yeah, it's been great so far. So amazing. And so, and so then, yes. So you were already kind of working on the game before you went to went to Vancouver. You all decided to make the move, and uh, but before that, I guess as you were discovering what kind of game you wanted to make, there was of course the 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 early gifts that were being made, right? 
Right. So I think we have some of those. So we'll, we'll put some of some of the inspiration for the game up, and maybe you can speak to some of it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so th- th- it started with the like I said, an experiment. It was just like I'm pretty sure it's just a capsule that he flattened, um, and then yeah, that 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 also got like good traction on Twitter. And mm-hmm. then uh, Clement, he was probably thinking like uh, like what what would be a nice and like combination of animation and ragdolls and i think right. boxing actually fits really well into that yeah. so yeah he took it a little bit further he uh this is some very old gifs we're looking at now those are some of the experiments i see sing world because yeah all with everything and yeah so he, he started uh, like evolving just on that e- idea uh making the characters look a little bit quirky and funny and yeah. uh, we always wanted it to like appeal to kind of like a younger audience but not like only them just wanted it to look cool yeah and uh who did all this concept art this is all clement yeah okay Kevin and there's a, a another artist thomas nice um they they did it together it's a lot of brainstorming between them Okay, yeah. okay, and, and where did the idea of the butts come in? <laughs> I think they, that, that's probably just Clement having some fun. I don't think he really wanted it to be uh, so focused on the butts, but I guess yeah. it also appeals to a younger audience. <laughs> but um, I, I remember at some point we were having like a big discussion on Slack. We were like, "Oh, we have to change the name because this is this might be some like a weird territory to go down." Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it works. Yeah, it, it, it ended up we decided we decided that it's just gonna work. That's amazing. We left it like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and so I guess that was when it started to get really close. That that video that uh, gif we just saw with the character walking around. You're like, hey, that's what we wanted to feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And we really stuck with that throughout the entire thing. Through the entire game. Okay. So so you you knew you wanted to have this kind of uh, these funny rigs moving around, this springy, physicsy kind of thing. And then, I guess that's when the game design came in, right? So now you're you're just trying to settle. What is the game actually? How are we using these these f- uh, fun rigs? Uh, and so, can you talk about how the, that pool type gameplay came to came in? Yeah, I can uh, can yeah. share a little bit of a of a story on sure, how sure. It, it changed from like the screenshot and uh, also what I got here um, some uh, a video. Um, of the of a prototype we had like one year ago uh, and it was more focused on elf uh, and stamina uh, it was a uh, very uh, related to only that so it, it kind of changed from that, that point because we were like okay that's that's great we have health and stamina yeah but uh, we kind of have an issue with uh, is that game actually uh, providing an experience you can't have on another game? Mm. Uh, sort of like, uh, if we have that fighting game, uh, can't we have like that uh, a similar experience on a different fighting game? Yeah. But uh, so so it was kind of the the starting point of like uh, we we kind of have to uh, rethink a little bit uh, from the ground. So I kind of asked uh, Clement and Thomas uh, what was the motivation behind like the the beginning of the project, mm. and it was like uh, we want to do pushing instead of pulling. Like uh, you have Gang Beast or a lot of ragdoll games that are based on pulling, dragging someone uh, across the screen and all of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the idea was like let's do the inver- the opposite and push instead. Yeah. So from that point, I was like, oh, OK, uh, we could uh, just uh, st- like use uh, uh, we could maybe think of certain uh, games that are related to Pershing. And uh, at that point, I realized they, that's kind of like pulling like BR, you push a ball, uh, very kind of that mm. uh, ID behind it. So I was like, maybe we can mix fighting game with pull in order to create like something more uh, unique in a way. 
Um, and uh, yeah, uh, from that point, it was like a cert searching reference around pool, uh, getting more involved into like uh, what's uh, what's happening inside. Uh, I got um, I got into some Wikipedia article uh, like bumper pool, uh, which are uh, some very specific variant or crud but you use the ball to like you take the ball and you try to move it uh, directly on the um, on the pool table. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that, I, I think all of this information gave me the indication that it could become like sort of uh, we have uh, uh, a pool, uh, but uh, we're going to like launch each over into holes essentially. Um, so realizing that uh, there is like that base gameplay going on that could appear, I was like, okay, we we can make something that is like a really mixing fighting game and uh, and pool. Uh, in the game, uh, if I can show that, is, is uh, that a game that people have designed? The one you're showing on screen right now. What's what's it actually called? The one where people are throwing balls into the. Uh, it's called crud. There is a lot crud? of okay. uh, some What's history that? behind it. Okay, <laughs> but it was invented like um, in the military. Uh, oh, interesting. And uh, it was more of like a fast-paced uh, pool game. So, like. I found all of that quite interesting that yeah. uh, we could have a, that much vari vari variety uh, around uh, that simple ID. So, and I, I don't know, it made me very, very confident that no matter what, uh, we could like use that as a base reference uh, to really make sure nice. that the game design uh, core uh, has uh, a foundation in a way. Okay, so it became one of your pillars basically. Exactly. Nice. Uh, if I show like inside the, the prototype, I can like, we, we have a ragdoll character right now, but uh, we're really like, we, we really did go all in and inside is just a ball rolling uh, okay. for real. Like, <laughs> it's just as if we had a pool oh, game, but okay. it's really hidden in a way uh, so that really the game design pairs with uh, what's going on in the game. That's so interesting. So so that ball, it's not just a representation, that's the actual physics shape? Yeah, Is yeah. It, that's, oh that's, uh, that's actually what's going on like in <laughs> the, in the so game good. simulation. Uh, and uh, that that's as like the primary reason of uh -oh. it's great because we pair design and game, but also we like do networking uh, optimi that optimize the networking and the cost of the simulation as well. So. I see. I mean, it's 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 a great to see that game pillar make its way all the way through the game, all the way to the physics system. I love seeing that yeah. through line. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That that's mainly it for the the design part. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. And then I guess there was. Were were there more uh, of the gifts you wanted to show from from what the from what uh, the main creator made uh, like the original uh, gifts on Twitter or should we jump straight to to, to an actual game? I, I think we can we can jump in. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, there is some like I have some slide here, but <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, it's mainly like uh, the idea of uh, going more into that uh, poll ID uh, more gotcha. than anything. Oh, so these were some some like concepts you did to illustrate the game design. Yeah, that was some creative brief. Uh, we worked uh, Clement and Thomas and me together uh, in order to really communicate. Uh, oh, could you put that in full screen for us? Uh, hit just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Button. for sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me see. Okay, it was uh, really uh, the the idea of. Uh, Oh, um, let's say uh, it's uh, going to be uh, I push someone and maybe you, the fact that you pushed that person, it also pushed someone else on the way. So we chain can reaction. create some re chain reaction, yeah. uh, which is technically what happens with pool by default. But uh, we can kind of embrace that idea right. by the fact it's 
a fighting game. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, so we're we're gonna actually put it to the test and it, both of you are gonna go at it in a match of barefoot boxing. So we're gonna load up the games and we're actually gonna play against each other. And the I want the audience right. uh, who's watching to get involved. We're gonna we're gonna be cheering, we're gonna be uh Siding with either Hendrik or Evan. I want to see some people on Team Evan, some people on Team Hendrik. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's load that up. Let me know when it's ready. Chad, if you have any questions, please throw them in. I'll be taking your questions throughout, uh, throughout the entire stream. There's no specific Q&A section. I'll just be taking your questions. Like uh, Freeman in the chat says, uh, that crud game, that's how you break a pool table. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we in a game? Yeah. Is this it? Yep. We're All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so who's who? Who's Shaggy? Shaggy is Evan. Evan, okay. I'm Batman Pro, yeah. Amazing. So, so yeah, you'll you'll see it's, it's like a, a, the animation, like the Ragnall animation is something we really wanted to stay true to from... Yeah from the beginning with the tweets like doing well so always yeah. kept that it's also funny and whimsical mm -hmm. and here i like have an item now which is also something we did uh with uh, actually originally always had that we wanted to keep yeah um there's a bunch of different items there so the game was meant to have that kind of party feel right and that's why you dropped yeah. in the items okay yeah exactly it also just gives a little bit more variety to it, it's not just you punching um, you can like use it to your advantage. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Got him. <laughs> Wait. So oh. we're we're looking at whose screen right now. I want to see who whose whose points those are. The bottom left. I'm on eight points at the moment. So if you see okay, eight that's, points, that's in you. It's All right. okay. we're on, yeah, we're on your screen. We're on your screen. Oh, Confirmed. great. Okay. It's a lot of pressure now. <laughs> I see Evan is just, he's just killing the bots for points. He's Can avoiding I get a poll me. in the chat? Oh, yeah. Evan versus Hendrik. <laughs> I'm this, game, this game is available now. I dropped a, there's a, if you're on YouTube, you can find the link to the Steam page in the description. And on Twitch, we'll drop the link in there. Uh, and we have a question from uh, Pilotech Joe asks, is this game made in ECS and netcode? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. We'll get more we're going to go that. over it. We're going to get more later. into Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We'll break that down. <laughs> Emo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 23 oh points. God. Take that pot. Oh. There we go. <laughs> it's such an interesting design for a level actually it's got it's like so sort of like unusual in a in a nice way yeah yeah i'll um this is one of our first levels and oh, yeah. there there's been a lot that we actually learned um just by playing and, and seeing how it goes um yeah, yeah i'll talk a little bit about that um maybe afterwards after the match yeah okay yeah i'll show you cool. some of the the other levels and also talk about like the things we learned because we we had a very because uh, we're all kind of new to to making games yeah and uh, we're like fresh in the industry um we we try to keep it like very iterative mm -hmm. uh, so we do like weekly play tests and all that because it's all about how we feel and if we're, we're getting the stuff across that we right. that we wanted and that we built um yeah. Wait, so wait, who 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 just got this? Shaggy. Oh, Shaggy got it by two <laughs> points. Good job, Shaggy. Just by two points. Okay, so close. <laughs> but I love the character designs. They're so good. Oh, we start. Oh, so this is another level that you have. It's yeah, more like yeah. the skate park. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like this. The the hole that's like right in front of your face, right down the center. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> the bot just got pushed oh, into. But yeah, this is, I think this is maybe one of my favorite levels. Huh. Um, it's not like you'll see there's another one coming afterwards. Yeah. That is, uh, it's probably a little bit more brutal, but we also think it's cool. Um, like I think it's cool, at least. I want to see that one. It's a challenge. So, so when yeah, you're on the on the ramp, since your physics is evolved, you roll down the, like, the side of the ramp? Or is it made so that you're not rolling? I think it's a little subtle. Okay. But like, yeah, if you can, if you look you at me, you can get launched up. 
like yeah. it, uh, uh, the stupid yeah, it's, bot it's, is attacking me. I see Shaggy sl sliding down, yeah. Yeah, it's trying to target a Even. velocity, but it's still like full. Yeah, <laughs> and you see the leg slowly dangle. It's very interesting the dynamic between that, like the physics and the oh, and the rig. And we also don't want to remove too much control from the player. Like if he's fighting on a on a, a slope, then we don't want to roll him into like a danger area. Either. Exactly, exactly. And keep as much control as possible. Might be confusing since you don't actually see the ball, right? Like, yeah. Why am I rolling down this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, double kill. I, I, you know, this this level looks like a place I just want to be in. Like, there's a skate park, there's a rock climbing wall in the back. It's like, I just want to hang out here. <laughs> yeah, I used to skateboard as a kid, and this is definitely home for me. Yeah. <laughs> I really like uh, that uh, environment map. I think it looks very, very it's good. So good. The fun little, we must have had fun making that graffiti, just placing it about. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, another thing that uh, maybe we didn't talk about the art direction. Or, or are we getting to yeah. the art direction? Yeah, we'll part? get right into that. We oh, have okay. some, some some visuals to share as well. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Let's jump how, in. How many characters are there? Six. Six, okay. So you've got the robot, the fish, there's a frog, I see a skeleton. I see this that other guy there at the bottom who's punching the air. Maurice, yeah. <laughs> Maurice. <laughs> we just got pulled into a hole. Yeah, and then we have um, also we have like skins that you can change. I think we have like three skins per character. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay. And, and, so, and so currently there's an online game mode, right? Yeah. At the moment it's online, online only. Yeah. Um, we wanted to to really focus on that because we feel like this is a game that you can enjoy with your friends from anywhere in the world yeah it also made sense during during COVID to to like bring people together online as opposed to indoors on yeah. the same couch <laughs> yeah. um so we really focused on that and a lot of our design decisions are also based on that so uh, we wanted to launch with online only and then um, just see how it goes and then take it from there just again yeah. iterating no, so, so I guess not, oh here's the final level we'll get a quick look at it and then we'll jump oh this is cool. beautiful where is this supposed to be set in it's France I think France okay it's Italy Italy, Italy. Italy. Okay, oh, okay nice uh, it's, we call it a village plaza internally right oh, yeah and yeah the reason why it's a little bit brutal is is you have to get over this this little channel river. Yeah, yeah the channel and um that makes it really tricky because sometimes someone could just wait for you on the other side and as soon as you get across they launch you yeah but if you miss like i just did you just fall into the water and if you fall into the water does it count like falling into the billiard holes on the like on the map or is it just is it something different yeah i, I think it's something we just uh it, iterated on again um I don't know, I think maybe in the beginning, Evan, we, we didn't make you lose points, but now you lose one point for falling down. Okay. Yeah. And I, the other I, person doesn't gain a point? No, no. You they only push gain you in? points okay. by pushing into, into the, the hole. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so I guess in billiards, it would be equivalent to punching or th uh, shooting the ball off the... Oh, interesting. Yeah. The yeah. Or the, what do you call it? Table. <laughs> yeah. Can you jump into the boat and just get out of there? No. <laughs> like, I'm no. done with this. <laughs> Let's try. No, you can't reach it. <laughs> no. <laughs> like how you're actually trying. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't encourage my stupid questions. Uh, <laughs> all right. So I think I think that's that's a great way. Wait, 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 you know what? Let's finish this round. I need to give you a chance to win, Hendrik. You've been no, just... You, no. you lost the last two. Come on. You got to end it on a win. <laughs> no, uh... Oh, we both have I'm two not gonna points? Let Evan's like, win. no, it's not happening. Oh, we both have two points, or does Evan have zero? I I, I, I had zero because I was trying to give you a chance, but... Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I don't deserve oh, a trash talk as we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we like to see. So these uh, designers are just always better. <laughs> Francisco asked... Um, oh. Oh, first of all, thanks to Lana Lux who's rating us right now. So Lana Lux, an amazing Unity uh, streamer, just rated us with 182 viewers. Welcome everyone. For everyone who's just joining us, we're looking at a made with Unity game, Bare Butt Boxing, and we're going to be looking in editor at how the game was actually built. 
Uh, we're going to be looking at their character rigs, uh, their ECS and networking implementations, and a bit more than that. We're going to jump to the art direction next. So thanks for joining us, and thanks, Lana, for the raid. We did a stream with Lana, by the way. It's on our uh, YouTube. If you check the live section, it was uh, incredible. So please go check that out. Follow uh, Lana on Twitch. All right, you've got 15 seconds to, to bring it home. There's zero points. <laughs> It's not going well. You'd stop falling in that channel. <laughs> we actually do have a, a, a comeback mechanic, so if I do uh, shoot the, the hero, I mean the leader into the goal, yeah. then I'll get some extra points. Oh but nice! Oh, that's 3-0, you know? By unanimous people. decision! Even with easy, <laughs> easy. Oh my god! I don't want to see what it's like in your office. <laughs> Trash. No, I'm just joking. Uh, we have a great question, Harry uh, Alisbakis, uh, our uh, Unity's um, a Unity Shader Wizard in the chat, <laughs> asks, uh, "Is it me, or are there uh, no real-time shadows here?" So what is this? Yeah. So. It's gonna be hard to answer that. Yeah. I think I think for the most part, yeah, it's not real time, but there are some in a way. But I forgot. I I can't say for sure. how okay, okay. It's made. No but yeah. For the uh, most part, it's baked. Okay. Cool. And uh, Francisco uh, Gutierrez asks, how much time did it take to develop the game? Oof. I think uh, yeah, it, it's probably when when I started because when when Clement messaged me uh like on when we started working together on twitter he had the experiment ready but he wanted to make it online so i would almost say that's probably when things really started picking up okay um cool. and and he's like uh he did most of the the programming stuff with was experimental that he did so mm -hmm. i think with the engineer coming in like that's like your moment where things really start to develop okay awesome uh, so as promised, we'll jump into looking at the art direction. So, all right, look at that right now. Who's going who's to be sharing their screen? Oh, no, I think we have some images to showcase. Yeah. So we'll, we'll jump through those. We'll share those images and you can maybe speak to them. Uh, yeah, just talking about the art direction. Yeah. Uh, I think <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy to tell, but uh, the main goal uh, was to try to uh, kind of bring a light-hearted feeling and uh, make uh, make sure that uh, that light-hearted and casual feeling translate to the visual of the game. Mm. Uh, so something colorful, not too detailed, uh, clear shapes. Uh, that was the main uh, the main points. Um, we also had very clear. Uh, concept art uh, and key art from from Loren, uh, which helped really define uh, the direction uh, mm. little by little. Uh, for example, <laughs> yeah, that uh, was uh, some first uh, iteration uh, on uh, some character design. Uh, so good. So <laughs> welcome to Unity's official stream. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, like after having. The, the weird characters, uh, it was kind of trying to translate them into uh, something that is uh, kind of um, w which pretty clear color theme and like uh, oh, beautiful. Uh, cool characters, I'd say. Yeah. Um, very, very also like that process of trying to build uh, the level design, uh, which was like trying to uh, bring a lot of references and uh, having Lorraine doing some concept art of them. So that helped a lot bringing them uh, into 3D because uh, like uh, it was uh, already shaping uh, in that direction. At the beginning, it was more of like, oh, we're trying some shape in the level design. And after that, we'll see how we do the art direction and everything. Yeah. But uh, after a while, we realized it was easier to really focus on the whole theme uh, at the right at the beginning mm -hmm. and making sure that uh, the uh, the art and the level design follows kind of the same path. Uh, yes. Okay. So, you, you, yeah, go ahead. I think so we have yeah. a video of that, uh, of the level concept as well that we'll play now. Yeah. This image is We're just amazing. <laughs> okay. 
think it it shows pretty well like uh how detailed uh but and clean the the levels are in 3d uh -huh. and this is uh, in like where did you build this in this uh, rendering um this, this is, is unity this is unity, unity okay. uh, nice uh universal render pipeline okay uh, with this with the big lighting yeah with some big lighting I love the, uh, that, the, the the glass there in the back. What, what, what's going on with that? Uh, it's also a shader Some made. Shaders, yeah. Yeah, we we have a, a wizard uh, on that <laughs> uh, that is like a Matt uh, Matthew, uh, yeah. really really uh, or technical uh, director that really helps shaping these shaders and uh, like lighting uh, problematics. Yeah, it's uh, it's super beautiful. I really like that. It's like there's a light at the bottom, and then the way it's like refracting through that glass is what's happening, right? Mm, I okay. also agree. It looks very good. Very <laughs> it's, good. It's, yeah. it's it's fun to look at, sort of. It's honest. It almost looks like drawn, to be honest. Like it looks like a, the concept art. It's like the concept art brought to life. Uh, it feels like the vision is very clear when you're looking at the art, and it's interesting to see the. Uh, the box is looking more like the Mario Kart boxes at first, <laughs> like the item kind of thing, and then seeing them get their their personality as the gift boxes. Yeah, <laughs> very cool to see. Yeah, uh -huh. you you'll also see from this uh, B-roll there's uh, the numbers over the portals, the goals. Oh yeah, and that Just is uh, also something where we were exploring. Yeah, so if you get someone into the the goal and you get three points, and then on top of that you get some extra points, it's just something we try to uh, do to allow players to go to different areas of mm -hmm. the map more. Um, but that didn't quite work out as well. But uh, yeah, so we ended up doing like style points. So if you shoot someone into a goal from very far, oh, then, you get, then you get extra points for that, uh, which yes. worked a lot better. Yeah. And for people who aren't aware, who haven't got, like gotten their hands on it yet, you can charge a, a shot, right? So you can do a, yeah. a right punch or a left punch and you can charge it up. And hit far and what's fun is while you're charging one punch you can like keep punching with the other hand right yeah. <laughs> so you still have one line of defense but you can't turn anymore right so you're basically mm. committing which keeps you vulnerable so it's it's it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic uh in the game um so okay so uh, the next thing we'll look at i guess is the character rig which is obviously a big focus for the game so we're gonna jump to uh even your screen share correct uh, Android, actually mine. And yes. Okay. Yeah. Android yeah. Screen gotcha. We, cool. Before we do that, I just want to um, yeah. talk about the level first because yeah. Uh, yeah, we just saw the level and um, I want to talk about like uh, how we iterated on that. Oh, definitely. And uh, yeah, so in the with the first level we did the space launch we saw earlier. Uh, there's actually one thing we noticed was that people like to play closer to the camera so everyone there's like if we had a heat map of it there would be a like a very red area at the bottom because it's a uh, way more comfortable to be close to the camera and like do all your like uh like your action decisions there and then we noticed there's not a lot actually happening in, on the far side of the level yeah um so we we really try to make um because of that and with the perspective um you'll see that the far side of the map looks a lot bigger mm. um and that allows the player to like when it's at a at a strange angle it allows him to um just traverse that area much better okay, um and then it allows for uh, some fighting and stuff there and then um, another thing we noticed was uh, obviously there's a heat map around each of the portals and the goals because people want to like at the same time you want to stay away from the goal but you also want to go towards a goal if you see someone in a vulnerable position yeah um so yeah basically just a combination of all of that we uh used to uh, really get it right um so, so it's like yeah. a forced perspective right like you're forcing the like, yeah in, in the actual build of the level okay. yeah yeah so the camera camera pans um we can switch to to my stream to your screen okay we'll go to your screen. Yeah. there we go um you'll see if if the camera is too i guess shallow then it's really difficult to see are we uh, on your screen right now is it this one the with this uh, we're looking at a skate park right now that is mine it just looks a little bit frozen um I don't see anything moving like yeah still of that 
small technical issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here we try again. Yeah. So your yours is moving around, right? On your end? Yeah, yeah. I've been moving okay. it around. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed that was a bit frozen. Oh, there uh, we go. There we We're go. back. We're back. Awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So if the perspective is very shallow and the areas at the back are are small, then players tend to fall off a lot. Um, and yeah, it's obviously just some stuff that we didn't want to do. Um, and was the other thing oh another thing that we also focused on you'll notice the levels they all have they're kind of at a at a 45 degree or yeah like the eight the, the angles um and the reason for that is because we wanted to allow people playing on a keyboard and mouse to not struggle getting oh, that on makes like a lot of diagonal sense Thing. So like everything keyboard is, mouse, you have WASD, right? And that's exactly, it. and you can combine W yeah. and B and W and A. And exactly. Yeah. Um, but that's eight, eight, eight directions basically. Only, exactly. Yeah. So our level also kind of went into like really leaned into that to make sure everyone gets a similar Very experience. I guess it's like an accessibility thing. Yeah, um, yeah. And you wanted there to be like, a, of course, it's like a universal solution for both controllers. It's not like, look, okay, these levels are for console, these levels are for PC. When you're making a game for multiple platforms, you have to keep those things in mind, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And the same applied to like how we angle the goals to, yeah, just keep it fair game for everyone. Okay. Can I can I just take, go on a quick tangent here and just ask mm -hmm. you about like the... Uh, actually, the multi-platform release, like releasing the game on multiple platforms. Uh, I don't think we mentioned what, what this is uh, on and what it's coming with, like, yeah, what the game has been released on. Right. So, so this is only on, on Steam at mm -hmm. the moment because we're, we're doing early access on it. Yeah. We really want to just polish things down, get it more stable, add things like the local multiplayer, mm -hmm. um, because I think that's also uh, going to be important, like having local multiplayer and a bunch of people sitting on the couch and playing the game um i think it's way more common for that to happen on consoles than right. like steam bolts um so yeah we're taking it little bit little by little um and we have we have all the dev kits and stuff ready for for the consoles uh we're just we just have to go roll it out yeah and have you announced which consoles uh, it's coming out on yet there's been a, a lot of uh, questions about switch so we will figure it out. We'll probably do Switch first and uh, and see how that goes, or maybe Xbox. Uh, it all it all depends. We haven't decided really yet. But okay, yeah. but it is being built as a multi-platform uh, title. Yes, for sure. Okay, awesome. So yeah, uh, you see so where you last left off. You were talking about the just the eight angles. Uh, yeah, and you yeah. covered that. Yeah. I think I think that was pretty much it. Cool. Um, yeah, this is just how the level looks in the editor. Um, yeah. It's, that was that was it. Yeah, looks really good, honestly. Uh, can, can you zoom out a bit more? I love seeing this the the inner workings, the behind the scenes with things. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, I see. There's a half pipe over here. I wonder where that's from. <laughs> it's just sitting there. That's so good. And if you can, you like rotate around and see like what's behind the thing. And are yeah, these... there's some some cities. Yeah. yeah. Some Backdrop. cities. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, we it's really interesting this, to see. Yeah, we had this uh, little balcony over here, which um, I noticed it. Yeah, to run up here and then go play around there, punch. Oh, uh, we also wanted to put an item up there. Nice. Um, but or we did put an item up there for a while, but uh, then we realized, like, with the camera moving too much and the level being really deep, it's just the camera's it, movement is too crazy. Gotcha. So we kind of gotcha. it's more of a visual thing now yeah yeah but it's still okay. there it's like a little easter egg yeah can you actually get up there if somebody like punches you up there if yeah maybe if someone punches you up then okay. it's possible but you can't yeah, you can't jump right. up there anymore no yes, no no, it, no it's very tough yeah but, uh, we, we've never been able but maybe there is uh someone someone online will figure it out that's how yeah. that's how the internet works <laughs> yes, if it can happen it lighters. will happen right <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. So, uh, was there anything else in the levels you wanted to show? No, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted awesome. to get to that. No, that's it. Was really cool. Thanks for sharing that. And then uh, I think we'll jump straight to the uh, character rig now. Right. Yeah. And look at some of that. So, uh, so let me just unload the skate park, and then I also have a version of this here. Uh, but uh, 
we have Peter Horvath in the chat asking, uh, the game looks super nice. Uh, what assets did you use, if any, from the Unity Asset Store? Hmm. I, I don't think we used yeah. any, did we? Yeah. There is none. It's all oh, no. homemade. Uh, nice, I mean, nice. There's there's some plugins maybe. Um, yeah. But uh, not not any 3D or uh, content assets. Okay. Yeah. So so like some like editor extension type stuff. Like your yeah. Odin inspectors and those kinds of right, uh, right. things. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I guess actually I should probably be using the Blender, showing Blender first. Um, nice. Yeah. So so our characters, they were done in in Blender because it was just uh, for me on the in the early stages when I started reworking the experiments Yeah. Um, that Clement posted. I... Uh, I was only familiar with Blender. So um, yeah, we have this Blender project file where you essentially have all the all the skins sharing this the same uh, the same rig. Um, and then you can export it together if uh, and you, you do export it together in order to get it into the game. Um, but we also actually set up the animation in here. Um, so uh, actually, maybe I should talk about that a little bit more. But uh, essentially, what we have, how we did the, the active ragdoll for our game was uh, yeah. we make a, a, a completely ragdoll rig. Okay. And then um, in we, Blender. In yeah, uh, well, yeah, the rig is built in Blender, but Beautiful. like it, com it imports into yes. a physics rig in Unity of that. Um, but then we also have like an animated. Um, uh, like the, the keyframes here in Blender. Uh, let, me, let me just show. Okay. So the keyframes are all here. Why is it not showing? Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Um, so yeah, you can see like the, the walking. Let me just play this. And it'll go through all of them. Like the item pickups and the punching and all of that is, is set up here in Blender. And then what we do in Unity is we we make the, the ragdoll uh, configurable joints uh, we make them like follow the same animation as like what we're seeing here. And the reason why it might also look a little bit strange is because we only do joint rotation, so we don't fit the, move the position of each of the, the character limbs. Um, we just do the rotation and um, yeah, and that okay. like gave us a, a nice pipeline in order to tweak the animation and put it in Unity and see, like, does it actually work well with the ragdoll? Not just mm -hmm. the, the the visual part of it, but also, does it feel like I'm walking slow or fast or I see or all of that? And then, and obviously in Unity, you can also have like drag and mass, and those things could very much affect how it actually how well it mimics the animation. Of course, and and you say you don't uh, change the position. Is there a reason for that? Um. So you want to do the rotation? Yeah, it, it kind of just forces it forces things to go where they're not supposed to go. So like mm -hmm. if you're if you're standing right next to a wall mm -hmm. and you punch, then the animation is gonna kind of force that collider to move to go into the wall, and yeah. then it explodes or yeah, okay. like a physics explosion. So we learned that just rotating the joint. So if you if you do hit the wall, you're you're just gonna stop there and. Um, oh, interesting. So you're not like too much. You don't have to carry through with the uh, with the movement, basically, exactly. which will go through. A, okay. Yeah, yeah. So gotcha. that rotation is also a bit of a spring, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's not forced. Um, so yeah, and then we just export this. We use the, the Blender's NLA, and we export this, and then eventually, when it gets into uh, the editor. Um, we we do another thing that uh, we call it volumes. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and play. Uh, there might be some bots running around annoying me, but uh, yeah. So then this is like our our idle pose, and then I can go and like start mixing some of the the blender animations. So it's important to also realize that the state that this character is currently in is like a. a semi ragdoll state so it's going to try to follow the animation as much as possible yeah but if it's forced it'll it'll still like move a little bit there's a, a weight we put on it gotcha 
So yeah, and then in Blender we can we can enable like is walking. You'll, you'll see only the feet are walking and the hands so everything good. stays the same. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, these are all also on layers. So arms, legs, left arm, all that is uh, something that we that we felt was important. Can you click through the layers? Is it, so it's just like each animation is attached to to the layers. Just about weights. No, it's um. It's it's about combining. Like if if yeah. uh, let, let me show you. Uh, so that's walking. Yeah. Um, if you stop walking and you able has item, then the hands go up. Yeah. Um, but if you disable that, you just do a left punch. Oh, what's happening here? <laughs> that's that's break dance. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's put his hands up. Maybe he'll stop. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, we wanted to just it just allows the the arms and stuff to move independent from each other so we don't force everything to to like replace the animation that we're trying to make it do um, that makes sense and yeah so and then you can also combine like we have the has item but then we can also do is walking and then it does the, the walking part <laughs> um and i think so if I good. Play a little bit more might see uh, what is disable well no, maybe not disable or dead uh, oh, actually, yeah, it won't really entirely work. I don't know why he's so like, fancy at a party. today. Yeah, yeah he's headbanging. He's at a rock concert. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it's a. Uh, we found like there's a nice combination of like animation and ragdoll that we can put cool. together in one rig, and then we we played around with it in the animator. We got what we have today. Amazing. It's so good. I mean, that's like really well implemented. How much experimentation experimentation did it take to get to this uh, workflow? There's a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. At the, I think you you can get the. I think you can do this uh, two types of ways. I saw the there are some other games. Um, the people from Free Lives that that made Gorn, they they just use Love the math. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they just use the math to like do the walking. So they don't they don't have a duplicated animated rig that they mimic yeah um so that's why it also looks a little bit more quirky when mm. you see the characters in gorn um and yeah that was our first that's how we started but then we realized we really wanted to polish the look and uh, to like be able to add animations and different looks without going through an algorithm of math <laughs> and whatever yes yeah Okay, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And I know there is something interesting going on with how bones in the rig are networked. Do you want to talk about that uh, now or when we get to talking about network uh, optimization? Yeah, I think I'll leave that for Friday. Okay. To take so we'll be that. back to a bit more on rigs. But before that, um, there's also the uh, feedback system, which you built, yeah. which is kind of like a VFX system uh, that in an in-house one that you've created. Can you show us that? Yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, let me... Let me launch the gym room. A lot of juicy and uh, stuff today from the stream. That's not <laughs> stuck. Otherwise, I'm gonna fix that real quick. Uh, yeah. Up. Uh, let's see. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Also, just want to quickly interrupt. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, it, so, Evan was talking about the the art direction earlier. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that. Uh, there was uh, there's okay. the artist working on that. I just want to give them a shout out. It's uh, Courtney started with the original, nice like the concept art for that, and then uh, Lauren uh, helped with basically everything else after okay. that, and like publishing and doing the skins and all that in combination with some other people on the team. Awesome. Um, yeah. Shout out Courtney. Shout out, shout out Lorraine. Shout out to the rest of the team. Amazing work, everyone. So good. I mean, it's looking amazing. They did a fantastic job. Um, all right, so I'm going to try to show some uh, example of typically what we add. Uh, let's see. So the character here, uh, okay. they all move uh, in a certain way. Yeah. When I take an item as well, like there are some VFX that happens. Mm -hmm. If I punch, uh, we also have some sound uh, happening. And all of that is uh, like handled by the presentation tool. <laughs> so if I go into our entity here at the bottom, we have here, for example, 
the movement feedback, uh, which is a scriptable object uh, on which uh, we have some established behavior uh, that are based on uh, parameters, essentially. So what that helps to do is to specify our, a sort of small visual scripting in a way that helps to adjust uh, in editor uh, the game feel. So typically uh, here uh, we can adjust uh, the, um, how much, uh, how at what point it starts to be working uh, based on the velocity. There's also, for example, the knockback movement. If I add an algen here and I punch it, uh, depending on if I punch or I charge punch, it's going to do a, a camera shake yeah. uh, and a VFX. And all of that is over here. Like we have a scene machine inputs that happens uh, and we can specify like the parameter. Uh, yeah what's the position of it, um, the intensity uh, of the, uh, like if it happens or not uh, in that case, uh, which means like depending on if I'm uh, like on fire and I punch someone or I charge punch, uh, we can have an input like a, a screen shake that is different. Oh, okay. So, okay, so it's really getting down to every detail. Like this kind of punch will yeah. this amplitude of screen shake, disc of frequency, all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Right. So we kind of have a mix of that experimentation of uh, like game feedback uh, mm -hmm. as an asset and also some like uh, legacy uh, feed previous feedback system that are on the character. Okay. Uh, and that, uh, so like the previous one, we still have some things that are like, uh, let's say spawning uh where it's like some parameters here uh and it defines or oh, the timeline is gonna change based on that value mm. uh, so that's how responding happen uh it's a timeline based on uh, a specific uh value uh, on the simulation side so the idea with that is kind of like that's why it's called presentation the goal is we have our simulation which is data oriented and we have a lot of variety of data and the presentation part only like look at the parameters and okay. react to that uh, directly uh, instead of uh, having uh, events in our case it's more of like adapting to the parameters and uh, showing on screen depending on what value has changed uh, directly and is this is there a particular reason you did it this way? Is it something to do with the net, it's to do with the networking or? Uh, the main reason is that it helps to kind of um, iterate more faster because okay. uh, we could have like uh, our ECS simulation that we work on and then uh, present it immediately without having to write uh, special code. Uh, we didn't add to like output uh, anything uh, on the mono behavior side uh, in a way. So we could just like iterate on the simulation and then mm -hmm. just have something that happens based on the data, essentially. Wonderful. Okay, okay. Uh, and are there any other examples you can show like what's happening? Sure. Do you uh, also use it for like the VFX that are on the, the items there and things like that? Or is it mostly just for the VFX on the character and screen space effects? Uh, there are a, a lot of variety, VFX, okay. audio, uh, stuff like that. Typically, for example, we have like here uh, the best ranked, uh, which is like it, it finds uh, an entity, a singleton entity, which so a component, uh, a single component that exists. And based on that component, uh, it's going to uh, set a specific text. So in that case, it's going to set the username uh, on the best score uh, directly. Mm -hmm. uh, here, uh, it's a set text feedback. Uh, it sets the score. Oh, no, it, in that case, not the right. username, but the score, yeah. Um, and it sets it directly uh, onto oh. the 
uh, the text we have set up here. Okay. So that that means like the um, handling the reference. We we don't have to handle a, a reference of that character. Uh, it's more of like uh, we are able to query uh, with our entities and mm. get the data we need uh, to show uh, on the UI or uh, when we like need to do a VFX. Okay, cool. So things uh, are kind of like decoupled from each other. Like they're kind of uh, it's more modular. Yeah, yeah. yeah which is something that uh, entities helps with a lot, basically making everything more modular, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the main idea behind it. Yeah. Uh, also, it helps to, um, like, if we want, for example, to change the audio system, like mm -hmm. how we output the audio, if it's Unity, FMOD, or something else, mm -hmm. uh, we can easily switch between all of that because it's not, like, uh, written in. by, yeah, typed in by code. Yeah. Uh, it's possible to do it directly in, uh, to adjust that directly in editor uh, and support a different scenario. That's great. So it also allows for a more flexible process and workflow on your end, which allows you to iterate uh, faster and more frequently. Yep. Very nice. Uh, cool. Thanks for showing us that. That was really cool. And now we're going to get to something people are always very curious about, which is uh, network and network optimization. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and we've already got so many questions in the chat of what kind of solution you used, and you you'll go over all of that, right? And then we'll also talk about the interesting solution you have for the uh, bones and rigs, and how you kind of the way you played it in an interesting way, so that you're not networking every single bone uh, in the system. But I'll let you yeah. I'll let you explain it. Uh, oh, so. All right, uh, so let's get into it. Uh, so there is a lot of history on the, that project of different networking solution we've used. Mm. Uh, we kind of try to do things by, by ourselves uh, using different ML API or other solution in the past. Uh, but in the end, uh, we settled on Fusion recently, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, give, which has like a client prediction uh, Ah, uh, how to say features integrated. Uh, so that's kind of helped a lot to like reduce the amount of effort needed. But uh, there's still, we discovered that even if we there is that help, uh, there is still some big problematic to solve after that uh, still. Um, so first I'd say, uh, in the case of a client prediction project, uh, we have to deal with a raw simulation, which means uh, we'll have the game simulation uh, happen not only once, but multiple times, uh, depending on the connection, like the latency you have with the server. So I can show that in a, in a profiler uh, directly, probably that one. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. perfect. <laughs> Got that prepared. <coughs> so, <Just> uh, pro. <laughs> usually, I, I'm I saw that sometimes uh, we use like hierarchy, but in that case, like timeline helps to explain a lot what uh, what's going on. Um, so typically, uh, with that timeline, we know like what happened at the beginning and what happened wow. at the end of a frame okay. uh, technically so what the cpu executes in order specifically and that order has a lot of importance <laughs> yes can, um, you, can you just illustrate an example uh, uh for, for the people watching like yeah. uh, of, of what a broken order might cause so typically game. let's say uh i have my uh, for example i have my input uh, that happens here Mm -hmm. And after that, I have like a simulation. So my whole um, gameplay simulation based on my input. Mm -hmm. uh, if that order is broken, uh, it means you can uh, have a, a latency of one frame. But the more you create uh, like um, bad ordering, I'd say, mm -hmm. the, the worse it gets. It, it gets especially with uh, resimulation, because you'll have uh, each tick that, is, that has to kind of work on its own in a way. Uh, 
it has to be able to uh, simulate based only on the inputs and the states uh, and if it's not like like that and uh, like the the way the simulation works uh, like the order is kind of messy uh, it's going to be terrible <laughs> yeah very quickly and <laughs> difficult to debug uh, so in single player games uh, usually this is not that bad uh, because uh, in general like in two or five frame at worst uh, it's going to resolve or like we're gonna have an event architecture that uh, deals with that in a way but in the case of a data oriented architecture you really have to be mindful of that uh, so that's for uh, the ordering at least uh, one other thing I can get into is mm -hmm. um, typically when I see that uh, uh, there are things I uh, problematics that appears automatically sort of uh, if we want the game to be 60 FPS uh, we'll have to hit uh, we'll have the CPU to do all its stuff uh, in 60 millisecond, uh, 16 millisecond on or lower, uh, which is difficult uh, in a, in the case we have a room simulation because uh, depending on the latency with the server, you're gonna have a lot of simulation that repeats. Uh, so you'll have to find strategies in order to really be able to fit within uh, that. Uh, 16 millisecond uh, mm. time. Uh, also, that's probably one of the main reasons a lot of games uh, tends to reduce to like uh, 30 FPS uh, yeah. at some point, just so that it's a consistent frame rate. Because in that case, uh, in that example I have, uh, like in, it's a bad situation, uh, sometimes it's getting below, uh, like it, the time is longer. So you'll have some stutter and that won't feel very great to the player. Um, so that's See. one problematic. And then like how to solve that uh, is uh, I see like just two possibilities in that case. It's reducing the tick rate of the simulation okay, or optimizing all systems one by one. Uh, if we optimize the system, typically I'm going to go into like a uh, data simulation. I can like point at oh item position system here and find a way to reduce the size because I know that it's repeated uh, multiple times right. uh, within a frame or uh, whatever else that we have here. Uh, we can also, we can't, for example, optimize the physics, which is pretty uh, sad in that case, but mm. uh, li like we can do the best we can in order to make sure that that um, simulation ticks takes less time. And if we reduce the tick rate, however, uh, in that case, there is less simulation to do per frame. So even if a t there is a big latency with the server, it can still be pretty sm uh, a small amount of simulation to do on the server. Um, so that's what um, the direction we took mostly uh, instead of being 60 tick, uh, it's more of like 16 ticks yeah. uh, per frame. And even if it's very, it seems very low, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like that in the game. So that's like the most important part because when I play the you game, you put it online, to the test to see if it, how it actually feels. Yeah. 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 The, the idea is like, mm -hmm. even if the, the real simulation is pretty low, mm -hmm. as long as it feels great mm -hmm. and you have the necessary amount of precision to like make sure that the game feels nice, it's going to be OK, uh, I think. Okay. But yeah, in a, in a context uh, of a, like a competitive multiplayer FPS where like every precision count, uh, in that case, you're going to want to like find ways to make it right. make sure you can have a really significant tick rate. Yes. But in a case you have like physics that take a significant amount of time per tick, yeah. uh, you don't have a lot of choice. Okay. So yeah. And uh, when it comes to the uh, phones that are being networked, 
each ragdoll has around 13 bones, right? So you're not networking every, the position of every single bone, are you? No. Uh, yeah. We're just networking the, um, uh, the ball here uh, and the rigid body. Um, I think velocity and position that, okay. are, that are networked in that case, probably rotation as well. And so you're uh, seeing the bones react on the client side. So each player might see a different, slightly, slightly different, different character, character yeah. rig bounce, but it's not like that's going to matter. Uh, exactly. Oh. Since yeah. the, the rig targets the animation by mm -hmm. default, uh, we know that we can reliably count on, okay, it's going to be maybe slightly different, but uh, the information is going to be the same for everyone. Yeah, uh, like, it'll be oh, the same place. Uh, the stuff that matters for the gameplay. Yeah. Oh, I did a punch and that hitbox appeared uh, here. Yeah. Uh, or uh, I don't know what else. If I do that, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I have big, big hitbox. <laughs> like, that, that's the part that's going to matter is mm. to... Even if it's super simplified, as long as it's uh, the visual are the right. same as the simulation, uh, that's going to work. And those hitboxes are not connected to the rig in any way, right? So they're always guaranteed to be in the same place. Yeah, uh, the ragdoll has kind of a kind of a gyroscope sort of thing going on, mm. where it's it has a rotation, so a mm. direction based on the position, mm -hmm. and that direction drives uh, some hitboxes. Gotcha. Uh, so that's why like it gets on that direction or that direction. But at the same time, uh, that that specific rotation position, that like that transform that does that, it just follows the position of of a ragdoll ball that is rolling around. We can see it here. Yeah. It's just just a basic ball uh, that I could show here. Like yeah, it's a sphere collider, a rigid body, nothing really crazy uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, but uh, it still has uh, a whole hitbox that changes uh, its rotation based on the direction you input. Yeah. Can okay. um, can I just quickly mention something to the Absolutely. people that maybe that didn't know what client prediction is or what it means? Yeah, please. Um, so. So client prediction, we wanted the inputs, because it's a boxing game, we wanted our inputs to feel very responsive. Um, so what client prediction does is it, it gives you a local simulation on your side that um, basically it happens immediately for you locally, and then it gets sent to the server. And then um, if the server agrees, even though the server is the server is going to be a little bit behind in time because it takes a while for that packet to get to the server. Uh, if the server is happy with the you're not cheating or you're not like somewhere ridiculous that you're not supposed to be, then it's going to allow you to it's just going to allow you to do that um, action. However, if you are not supposed to be there or perhaps your packet got lost on the way to the server, the server is going to do reconciliation. And then what that means is that it's going to send back, and that's where where the res the resimulation. That's why Evan was talking about the resimulation a lot um, and optimization is because when the server comes back and it says, okay, well you you are like ten frames behind. You need to quickly catch up. I'm going to send you all the events that happened in that time. That is when it starts to resimulate, and that's where it could become very expensive for depending on what machine you have so then you have to like catch up to where the server agreed that you should be and then you can continue from from there um okay yeah that's that's it and 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 nice. with with that as well we we that's when we started making the decision that if we have every limb or joint um networked and we're sending that to the server and the server disagrees with like just your your foot or something kind of irrelevant, mm. um, then it's going to come back and say, oh no, re-simulate all of this. And that's going to be like a big strain on the local machine, as well as just the size of the packet that's coming to you. That's right. So that's another reason why we went and um, we like reworked, like the, well, we minimized the things we send over the network so that we can easily re-simulate and easily like, reconciliate whatever the, the server is telling us. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and for anybody who has any more questions, please just drop them in the chat and I'll bring them to the team. We have a question from uh, David C asking, I noticed all the, boin the bones were pointing up in Blender. Uh, <laughs> were, the, were those bones oriented to the limbs at all? No, they're actually not. It's it's something that became a little bit uh, of an issue, but okay. uh, the reason for that is how it was configured. So we we used the like a offset rotation mm. um, for the bones, and um, yeah, it's just like, like always pointing upwards at its default state. And the reason for that is when you you import it into Blender, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, into to Unity, the configurable joints need like a a I guess like a comfortable zero 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 starting mm -hmm. rotation, and um, that just allowed us to to leave the configurable joints in their like default state, no matter what type of import we do. Um, and then uh, yeah, we we just basically took it from there. Like uh, the configurable joints, basically they're a bit of a sensitive thing. You don't want to mess around too much with the configuration or change them too often. So we just uh, kind of just made sure the Blender abides to the configurable joint. Yeah. And uh, I guess that'll bring us to the uh, final topic of the, the stream and of the day, which is uh, dots. Uh, we touched on it a little bit, but I would love to hear just in general your approach. Uh, when we were talking earlier, you said you're using dots at a small scale. Yeah. I'd love to hear uh, why you chose to use dots and uh, what some good what you think are some good practices with dots and the gameplay use cases for it. So maybe uh, you can uh, jump right into that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, the main reason we chose dots uh, at the beginning was because we already started using UCS on the pro ECS on the project. Okay. Sort of. So going with dots was kind of oh assuming uh, like kind of pu pushing the responsibility of uh, ECS management to Unity in a way. So that way we just work with the API and the stuff valid, and we don't have to manage any ECS engine part of things in a way. Okay, did that take a lot of the load off of you? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Before that, it was kind of like two choices. We either do it by ourselves or we use open sources solution. But okay. in that, in these two cases, that means oh, we put the responsibility on the open source uh, uh, um, package to be as stable as possible, uh, or uh, we put it on us. There is some conflict going on around that. So going for dots was kind of a safer approach to assume okay uh, since unity is going into that direction uh, let's follow on that for now uh, there is mainly that aspect of oh it helps us to build data oriented uh, because we were comfortable with that uh, more than anything at the beginning at least um, some over reason that came up uh, after that especially for that dots is that it helps to really enable uh, optimization uh, in the sense that uh, if I want to optimize a system of the game or if I want to uh, really um, improve the gameplay, I'm going to be able to do that unrelated to mono behavior in a way. So okay. we, we kind of have uh, having that ability to do offering uh stuff and uh, runtime stuff uh helps to really picture something clear that uh makes it easier to maintain on the long run um and uh yeah uh, essentially uh m easier to i don't know if for example i want to change the runtime for game design reason uh it's gonna be pretty easy to reiterate on that awesome. without affecting anything that is already serialized um, or if I want to optimize a specific system and its logic, it's also possible to do without like breaking anything. Awesome. And, and are there any other like uh, in-game like gameplay use cases that you've that you have to like illustrate for people watching? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Maybe I can share my screen and yeah. some small system. Uh, okay. If that works, okay. I'm gonna yeah. quickly. Yeah. Do... there. Uh... <laughs> 
re reset in order to have it unfreeze. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll hide the screen and bring it back so that it's not yeah. frozen. So. We'll see when, uh, when it gets back. But uh, yeah, I, I've did my... Uh, uh, but yeah, essentially on the gameplay part, uh, I have a small... Uh, I saw like... Uh... Uh, we did a lot of iteration on the project, so we kind of had that uh, situation where, like, oh, uh, we have that uh, that that type of data. We mm -hmm. also have like a ball rigid body character configuration that is in there. There is a variety of stuff that is not necessarily like a clean an, in a clean state, but that does not matter a lot uh, because. Actually, we Evan, so, sorry, your voice cut out just in the second where it went full okay. screen. Could you just repeat the first thing you said? Because the audience didn't quite catch it. I heard okay, you, okay. but the audience didn't catch it. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to try to to re restart on it. But yeah, yeah uh, it's in, in a little bit. Thank sorry. You. Oh, es essentially, uh, we have like uh, the, uh, the jump system, uh, which is, I, I think, a good example because it's pretty small. And uh, like uh, clear to explain because there are some other systems that are like a lot of stuff going on, so it's difficult to <laughs> really understand what I want to talk about. Uh, but in that case, uh, I have like ball rigid body character configuration, so that's a technically or character config, which is in the gem system. In that case, uh, we could say, oh, but maybe we want a specific jump. A configuration uh, that is unrelated so that way we can reuse jump uh, without having to rely on the character uh, without having to rely on any character configuration but for like the project in its state it's it's not very important in a way like we we don't have I, I don't have any problem with, oh, let's say I'm not using that anymore and now jump force that config is going to be so, from somewhere else um also uh i can uh in the case of fusion we did like a, a job network runner here uh which just translate all the data per tick uh of uh the i'd say the network simulation and put it onto a component so that we can now burst a lot of system uh with uh, the data we need. In that case, we need like the simulation tick and say, hey, if you pressed, if you started that ability at that specific tick, mm -hmm. um, and uh, kind of like like that. In that case, it's gonna be triggered, and uh, the jump is gonna happen automatically in okay. a way. So that in that specific case, we don't necessarily like have. Uh, a heath or anything like that. It's more like math that happens uh, in a frame. And uh, if events uh, like, oh, I pressed at that frame, uh, that input happen, in that case, the system catch up and reacts uh, onto over data. It just transforms data. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much it, apart from the, the fact that, well, we can burst compiled that whole thing and that's like very fast <laughs> nice so that that's pretty neat okay really cool uh any, any other good practices you would like advise or that you put, uh, implemented in this project that come to mind so yeah uh, from our experience uh working with that a lot of things happened uh but uh i'd say like a good practice is to try to not um overthink i'd say uh yeah. if if we start from a mono behavior let's say uh, i have a, a small draft here nice um we can like we know that uh entities as like a baking system integrated 
to bake like entities. And in the past, it had like config conversion, uh, but it has been deprecated. Um, these systems are not like necessary in order to use the API. Uh, in our case, we can technically like think of it as a way to do na native C++, mm -hmm. but within the C sharp. So if I'm like thinking of it that way, I could say, hey, I'm building my custom particle system. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll have an entity here, uh, which is like an handle uh, on that mono behavior. And I'm going to drive some very small, use very simple, um, let's say, uh, callbacks uh, in order to uh, communicate uh, with the ECS part. A typical example of uh, communicating with the ECS part we we could we can have uh, and that we realize is pretty useful is sometimes like affecting the data of the ECS or uh, calling a system um, like affecting a system because if here I, I reference that system and I I can technically communicate with it in a custom way without any issue. It's not going to be necessarily like the, the best way to, to deal with it, but that means like my logic is here and uh, my offering and interaction with the system and its data is uh, separated. Uh, so nothing stops me from doing multiple uh, like components, mono behavior components that's going to be based on uh, what's going on in the on the ECS side. Okay. I think that also really helped with uh, just integrating with packages that that don't have ECS like by default yet. Like oh, I see. Had with Fusion, they they did a lot of things still in the mono behavior way, and um, with this, what Evan is showing out really helped to just kind of standardize it across the the code base. So we're not doing different things for our authoring and being forced in a different path with uh, plugins. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Can't stop even. He's gonna re he's gonna <laughs> rebuild the whole game now. <laughs> uh, yeah. His, his work day is about to start again. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. This was amazing. Uh I just want to thank everybody in the chat who is uh, th throwing out all their questions and uh, all the for for all the great questions. We usually wrap these shows with um, your final takeaways. You know, it's such a it's a really long journey to get to the end of a game to get to build a whole game. So uh, you learn a lot, you face a lot of challenges, and I was just wondering for each of you if you just had like one piece of advice or a final takeaway that you could give to the people watching. It can be about anything in particular. Uh, but just something that comes to mind uh, to impart to the uh, to the audience watching. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I'll start I, with you, Hendrik. Yeah, I'll. Um, I would say that if if you're new, you're a new team, you haven't worked together, or it's a new project, mm -hmm. and it has like a long history. And um, I think the the best thing that worked for us was just being setting yourself up to iterate as much as possible. Yeah, um, we. We never really had a, like a designer. We we took like the design work on ourselves, and the best way of, of dealing that with that for us was to just iterate and play the game weekly and just keep keep going on with that. Um, so yeah, like you you need to set yourself up like as a team and with the programming, all those elements. And then just have fun with it. It's actually a lot of fun to just play test the game and talk yeah. about the things you saw in the week and the improvements. And so yeah, that's my takeaway. Amazing it's teamwork makes the dream work. And just keep communi keep communicating with each other. I love that. Uh, and even I have also a piece of advice, like more two piece, but mm. uh, it's uh, the the first one is really related to gameplay, like more gameplay. Uh, it's specifically for a game, make sure to really define what's the logic and the data of your game. How many times the data is changed per yeah. frame. Yeah. All of that is really critical and making sure like 
the essence of your game uh, is uh, really well defined and it doesn't creep up uh, to an infinite amount of system it is very important. So it's really possible right. to like just have a small amount of data and ma that makes a lot of content by itself. Mm -hmm. But that needs to really be uh, something you, you think about a lot. And another small piece is related to tools. Uh, it's a bit of a warning from experience of uh, like avoiding to bring any tools that are too e experimental in production. Okay. Uh, it's much more, uh, it's better for the iteration process uh, to like keep things simple as much as possible and make yeah. sure like the tools are really ready to be in production, even if you do it, do them internally. Okay. Uh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, both of you. That was uh, amazing. Uh, lo a lot of good stuff. We touched on art, we touched on technical stuff, the history of the studio. Uh, it, was, it was really good fun. And thank you to everyone for the questions. And thanks to everyone who jumped in from Lana Lux's raid. Uh, again, go check out Lana Lux, amazing uh, Unity development streamer on uh, Twitch. Uh, we have a lot of streams coming up for you in the coming week. Uh, so like, make sure to follow us here on Twitch, uh, on YouTube, where we go live. Uh, next week, we have a stream with Convergence, uh, another creator spotlight, which is the uh, game set in the League of Legends world. That's going to be on Wednesday. It's another creator spotlight. On Thursday, we have a hu the huge uh, LTS uh, release uh, stream where we'll go over a bunch of the features in the uh, 2022 LTS. We'll have a bunch of faces from Unity coming up on that stream so that you really don't want to miss that one. That one's going to be amazing. And then... Uh, on Friday, we have the final episode of our ongoing show, Scope Check. So that's going to be episode eight of the series where we build a game with the community. So definitely come check that out. You can find out if they were able to scope properly and finish the game in time. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, excited for that one. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, make sure to wish, actually not wishes, buy uh, Bear Butt Boxing. The description is, uh, the link is in the description for the YouTube video. And we're dropping the link in the chat right now. Uh, thanks again for joining us and stick around as we raid another Unity developer. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.